Jasmine. Now, if this is your first time meeting me, my name is Jasmine Cho, and I am an artist, an author. I'm also a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. I'm a daughter, a sister, and most recently, I also became an aunt. But to most of the world, who I'm known as is the cookie activist. Cookie activism is my way of using cookies to get people to talk and think about the issues that are really important to me. And one of the issues that I'm most passionate about is representation. What I mean by that is that I care about the people and the stories that I feel are missing from our history textbooks or are stereotyped and represented unfairly in the news and in the movies or the TV shows that we watch. So I make portrait cookies. They're made to look as closely as possible to the people whose stories I want the world to learn more about. One thing I know about cookies is that they're really effective in making people pause. I never met anyone who didn't love a good cookie. Cookies are so inviting and they remind me of love, which is why they're my favorite medium for my message. Today and all throughout March, we are celebrating Women's History Month or Her Story Month. I'm going to use my cookies to share just a few stories of some remarkable women. Then I'll demonstrate how I make my intricate portrait cookies. And finally, I'll show you a way where you can create your own portrait cookies to honor the favorite women role models in your own life. So first, I'd love to share the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg also lovingly known as RBG. Born as Joan Ruth Bader on March 15, 1933, she passed away just last year on September 18, 2020, after serving 27 years as a Supreme Court Justice. Ruth was the second woman to ever be confirmed to the court and the legacy she left behind is one of championing women's rights and gender equality. Ruth attended Harvard University to study law in 1956, and she was one of only nine women amongst a class of 552 men. She faced heavy discrimination in her program for being a woman, while also facing the challenges of being a new mom. Among the many things that RBG fought for and against, some of the things that we can thank her for include women being allowed to attend state schools, have a bank account, serve in a jury, and marry whomever they choose. Next, I want to share the story of Patsy Takemoto Mink. Patsy Takemoto Mink who lived from 1927 to 2002, was a true trailblazer. She was the first woman of color to be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and the first Asian American woman to serve in Congress. She was also the first Asian American to run for president. Patsy dreamed of becoming a doctor, but she was barred from attending medical schools who denied her because she was a woman. So instead, she decided to dedicate her entire life to fighting for gender equality. She is most known for co-authoring Title IX, which is a law that prohibits discrimination based on sex. This law is also what allowed women and girls to participate in school sports. The law was renamed in her honor as the Patsy T. Mink Equal Opportunity Education Act in 2002. And now I'm happy to share my Amanda Gorman cookie. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. 
These are the words from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb, which she recited during President Joe Biden's inauguration on January 20th, 2021. At 22 years old, Amanda is the youngest inaugural poet in U.S. history and the first person to be named a National Youth Poet Laureate. You may have even witnessed her reciting poetry at the Super Bowl, which was the first time the NFL ever invited a poet to perform. Amanda grew up with a speech impediment. She never saw this as a weakness, but instead as an opportunity to step into her power through reading and writing. She is already dreaming of running for president as soon as she is old enough in 2036. Now, the last story that I want to share with you is of Dr. Ellen Ochoa. And for her cookie, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you exactly how I created her portrait. When I make my portrait cookies, sometimes I'll use a photograph directly, like this one of Dr. Ellen Ochoa. But sometimes I'll also draw out an original drawing and then use that for my template. So I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how I create my own templates. Usually my portrait cookies are at least five inches or so, sometimes larger. And this is just because a larger canvas helps me get in as much detail as possible. So first, I want to roughly measure out the size of my cookie template. I've measured out about a five inch by five inch square. And now I can use this as sort of my guideline for where I need to work within for the size of my cookie. You can also just do a regular drawing, take a picture of it, and then resize that. Born in 1958, Dr. Ellen Ochoa is a former astronaut and engineer who was the first Hispanic American woman to fly into space. From 1993 to 2002, Dr. Ochoa completed a total of four space shuttle missions, logging nearly 1,000 hours in space. In 2012, she became the second woman and the first Hispanic American to become director of the Johnson Space Center. After I do a bit of a rough sketch by pencil first, I can then go over and outline with black markers. And this is for me to be able to have a template that's really simplified and clear for later when I project this image onto my blank cookies. So now that I have my cookie template drawn out, I can cut it out. Now that I have my dough rolled out, I'm going to use this as my template and cut out my dough. I create my intricate portrait cookies is I use the aid of a mini projector. This is the one that I have. Um, it's called, I believe it's called the Pico Pocket Projector by AXA, AAXA Technologies. So this is what the projector looks like. It has a slide for an, or a slot rather for a USB um, looks like you could also put an SD card in here if you had your files on that. But what I essentially do is I take a picture of the drawing that I made and then I upload it into a, a tiny little USB here. 
and then I could put the USB, plug it into my projector. And then what I use is this sort of special stand um, where I could affix my uh, mini projector. So it's got a little sort of, I don't know what you call that, like a little screw and it screws right into my stand here for my projector. So I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. Spin around. And now I have the stand ready to go. I've cut out my cookie and baked it off. So I could just set my cookie down, turn on my projector and project my image onto my cookie so I can start tracing. So I'm now projecting my drawing, this drawing here onto my cookie. So what I like to do is first just trace with a light um, edible ink marker, my hair, my face, all the sort of large areas first. And now I could start to base coat my cookie. Dr. Ochoa is also a co-inventor of three patents and the recipient of NASA's highest award, the Distinguished Service Medal. Do you play an instrument? Dr. Ochoa grew up playing the flute and she even took one up into space to play it on her first shuttle mission. Now, once my base of icing is completely dry, the way that I create my portraits is to trace over with some uh, alcohol and food coloring. Now, this is just clear alcohol, um, like a clear alcohol-based extract, like lemon extract or almond extract could probably work just as well. And then I have a little bit of food coloring. I like to use an ivory color because it's nice and light once I mix it in. So it's almost like watercolor painting where I mix a little bit of the clear alcohol. I put a dab of um, this food coloring here and I'm going to mix it so it's nice and light. And the reason I do this, I used to do freehand work, but it's hard to erase mistakes on a cookie canvas. That's why I like to make all my erasures on the drawing that I do first on paper and then use that kind of as my template. Now I can go over this and start doing all my details again with the icing. I like to start with the painted details first, especially when it comes to white. So this is called edible art paint. And I'm going to go in and paint in the whites of her eyes, as well as the white inside of her mouth for her uh, smile to represent the teeth. So these are very tiny details, which is why I like to paint them on using a really fine tip brush. And then while that sets and dries a little bit, I can go in and start piping other details. I'm probably gonna pipe in her eyebrows first. Next, I want to uh, paint a little bit of depth into her hair. So I have some brown food coloring and I'm going to go in with a little bit of paint here, again with my clear alcohol. Once that is a little set, I can go on top of it and pipe in the details of her hair.
Next, I'm going to pipe in an eye line over her eyes. And then I want to pipe in her lips. Now before I put down the icing over her facial details, I also like to add blush on my cookies. So I'm using what's called Edible Luster Dust. It's in a pink shade. And I'm just going to brush very lightly. So that there's a little bit of color in her cheeks. Now I'm going to go over the lines of her face with more icing. And Dr. Ochoa has kind of blue eyes, so I'm gonna pipe in her eyes now. That's looking pretty good to me now. While the eyes dry, I can go back over and put some details into her space suit here. Now, I continue to add a little bit more detail So this is Dr. Ellen Ochoa. So for today's event, we actually sent out a survey to all of you asking for suggestions on which women we should feature for Women's History Month. And I was so heartwarmed to see that one of the most common responses we got about the women that you admire most in your life were your mothers, your moms, and a lot of you also wrote your teachers. So I'm very grateful that we had somebody volunteer and submit a drawing of her own mother. This is the very beautiful portrait of Mrs. Yu Ling, who of course now you know through Kidsburg. This was done by her older daughter, Catherine. So I'm going to show you all how to convert a drawing like this into your own portrait cookies. So I printed out this drawing onto another piece of paper and sized it so that it's about as large as a five inch cookie. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this also as my template. Now the reason why I chose not to cut all the way in is because then it might be pretty thin and uh, make my cookies break a little bit easily. But you're more than welcome to try if you have a shape like this and you want to cut into uh, the spaces in between. It's totally up to you. I went ahead and baked off a cookie into the size of this drawing. And how I want to transfer this image onto my cookie when I don't have a projector is I can use an edible ink marker. Again, it's important to use uh, everything that's edible if you're working with food materials. And then I also have some tissue paper. So what I'm going to do is lay a piece of tissue paper over top here. I'm going to cut a piece so it's right over my drawing and tissue paper is pretty thin so you can easily see through so i'm going to use my edible ink marker and trace uh, this drawing onto my tissue paper now i'm going to get my cookie place this tracing over on top and then now I could trace into the cookie. And let's see if it came through. 
perfect. So you can see that just tracing, this side is a little bit darker because I did it in a few layers. This side is lighter, but that's totally okay because we want to cover this with icing anyway. So you use the edible ink marker and this is a way that you can very easily transfer your picture onto your cookie. So now that I have my cookie all traced out, I can go ahead and start icing in. One way that you can do this is to just follow your um, outlines as best as possible. But when you have fine detail on a portrait like this, you'll quickly find that it's really hard to try to trace in between like this. I'm gonna try to just do this for now without piping in the nose. So now that this is kind of like this, I'm using my scribe tool. You could also use a toothpick to try to spread around the icing. And you want to let that set for a little bit, um, maybe at least 20 minutes or so, just so it's really set. And then you can go and also uh, fill in your neck and the hair and all that. So again, this style is definitely possible, but an easier way, I have another lightly outlined cookie here, is to just simply go in and fill in the entire face area. So my face layer right now is uh, pretty nice and dry. So now I can go in and try to fill in the rest of the details. So yeah, I'll show you how you would do it if you really follow all your outlines like this. But another way would be to fill it in completely and then just go over it with black for the eyes. So I'll show you in this eye how you could just fill in. And then on this eye, I'll show you a way where you can do it this way and it might be a little bit easier to then just go over it with a black. And we'd wanna let that dry too. And from there, I can also fill in her lips. And then we could fill in her hair. You could go ahead and fill the whole thing in too. The reason why I'm doing it in sections is just like how the neck area dried like this. If I let this dry just a little bit, it'll create a natural separation line like this. So if you had outlined your eye like this earlier, all you have to do is fill it in. Or if you filled all of the white into your eye, you could just pipe right over it. Since you already had or should have had an edible ink marker, um, when you traced your image onto your cookie originally, you could also use this to fill in all the outlines as well. And voila! Now if you chose to do a base coat first without outlining all the facial features with your icing and you let this have some time to dry, the other way that you can trace is once this is completely dry, just do the face details and place it over your cookie and then you can trace again right on top of your icing. And then carefully lift that off and you have the trace of your face details right on top of your icing. I rushed a little bit so you can see that the um, icing is not totally dry. So again, ideally you want to let this dry all the way overnight just to make sure it's extra, extra dry. But we can still work with this. And 
there's the type of cookie, another version. You can see that the eyes look really different depending on whether you uh, outline your face icing first and then fill it in so the eyes look a little bit more level actually on this side whereas with this type of style where you base coat the cookie first the eyes kind of pop out everything pops out a little bit more i really think that both styles are beautiful and that it's just a matter of your preference on which style you want to go with i hope this demonstration helped show you that it can be pretty simple, although not necessarily easy, to create your own portrait cookies. But it does take a lot of practice to hold your hand steady, and even tracing can be difficult for some people. But I hope you'll try it out. I hope you had fun learning about all these incredible women and also a way to honor the women in your life like your mothers, your grandmothers, your aunts, your teachers. Really, we are everywhere around the world. There are so many women to honor and one of the most fun ways that you can do it through is by baking cookies of them. Thank you to all women, past, present, and future. We celebrate the histories of the women who have come before us. And to all the young women and girls who are watching today, remember that you too are someone's living ancestor. And I know you're going to grow up to be a tremendous change maker and history maker yourselves. I can't wait to see what you do.